Yo, I'm Sigfish Takes and thanks for clicking on my video. I wanted to give you a quick heads up. Heroes of Kingdom 2 is up for grabs over on GOG. If you're willing to give them your email so they can spam that bad boy straight into oblivion with annoying marketing emails. Hero of the Kingdom 2 is a casual point and click adventure game about a homie and his sister who was a bit loose and ran away with a bunch of pirates. Now, the developers say she was kidnapped, but uh, we all know she wanted some of that Johnny Depp goodness. Anyway, it was launched back in 2015, despite it looking like something that was launched when Jesus was walking among us. But I guess in these types of games it's more the story rather than the graphical fidelity. Hero of the Kingdom 2 is sitting in with positive reviews on Steam, so I guess they're doing something right. It doesn't tickle my not sack in the right way, but I guess luckily to each their own. Hero of the Kingdom 2 is kind of a special game with an interesting flow. For example, a bridge is out of order and in order to repair that said bridge you need 3 pieces of stone, a wet rope, 12 gigalos and an emo translator. You remember that there was an old lady in a village a couple of screens back that offered to give you 12 gigalos in exchange for a potion that will treat her current disease. The guy that sells the potion that the old lady needs, needs a glow in the dark vibrator from some other dude that's connected to another dude and so on and so forth. I mean there is currency in the game, but these NPCs rather have stuff for their stuff. Imagine going to buy a bike and instead of accepting your money, the bike shop wants the polar bear in your local zoo. This interconnection between NPCs, items and story progression is pretty much what you're in for from start to finish. For better or worse, I guess. But again, it's sitting in with positive reviews, so they must be doing something right. If you want to give it a go, I left a link in the description to take you straight to the GOG page. That's the type of quality I like to provide. If you want more of that, then give me your subscription of the day, it would mean a lot. Next up, we have Warshaw Rising City of Heroes, which is a challenging turn-based tactical RPG set in the occupied Polish capital during World War II. You get to pick your heroes and navigate historic streets, confront German occupiers, all while trying to survive the 63 days of hell in this historically accurate portrayal of Polish fighting for this city. I'm not entirely sure why, but it seems that the developers removed a lot of the actual content and strategic gameplay from the game that people paid money for and then turned this game into some type of visual novel. It's clear to see that the community did not approve this approach as they've sent this bad boy into mostly negative reviews. Strangely enough, the original game can still be played, you just have to open the settings and then go into the beta section and choose bootcamp public test branch. I'm not sure why they would hide it there, but I mean for those who enjoyed the game before the update can still play it to your heart's content. If you want to experience some taste of what our Polish homies had to go through during World War II, then this will give you the flavor sensation on the tip of your tongue kind of thing. Next up, Marvel Snap has hit Steam and it's now free to play. A Marvel Snap is a fast-paced collectible card game that reimagines the genre with what they call innovative mechanics. I'm not completely sure I agree with them, but um, okay. In fairness, Marvel Snap scratches the Hearthstone slash Legend of Runeterra itch, but it plays it in under 5 minutes, which means you can start a game when you land on the shitter and be done when the last poop drops from the bumhole. I played it for 3.5 hours and I didn't lose a single game. Now, I would love to take credit for my big brain strategy plays, but I think 99% of the people I faced were bots. It's actually not too bad of a game, but it's filled with deeply insulting monetization policies. Casual players will have a fun ride for some weeks. A competitive player should either prepare to seriously invest like 100 euros a month or sell a kidney to keep up with the high rate of cards added each month. Given the high rate of cards added each month and the extremely slow rate of getting cards due to inflated prices and randomization, you basically will pretty much never be able to play on a high level without investing huge sums to keep up with the meta. In fairness, these types of games really turned me off, so 3.5 hours was all I could muster. And for some reason Marvel Snap is sitting in with very positive reviews on Steam, so it clearly shows I have absolutely no idea what the hell I'm talking about. And that's pretty much all I had for you in this one. Thanks a lot for taking the time to watch my video, thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't, subscribe if you haven't, like it, why not? Thanks a lot for watching, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.